I think right now we're in very desperate times. I think the hour is late and the crisis is great, but here's why I'm encouraged. When the leaders here got in trouble that was beyond the scope of what they could solve themselves, individually or collectively, you know what they did? They sought divine guidance for it. We have in God we trust right above the rostrum there, and I pointed that out in my speech. This is James Michael Johnson, or Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House of Representatives here in the United States. People usually have many things to say about politicians who climb to this level of political accomplishment, but in the case of Mike Johnson, it is a whole different ball game simply because he openly and unashamedly speaks about his Christian faith and biblical worldview. I am a Bible believing Christian. Someone asked me today in the media, they said, it's a curious, people are curious, what does Mike Johnson think about any issue under the sun? I said, well, go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's, that's my worldview. That's what I believe. In fact, Mike Johnson boldly honors God and the Lord in his first speech as Speaker of the House. Dedicated wife of almost 25 years, Kelly. She's not here. We couldn't get a flight in time. This happened sort of suddenly. She spent the last uh, couple of weeks on her knees in prayer to the Lord. I don't believe there are any coincidences in a matter like this. I, I believe that Scripture, the Bible, is <clears throat> very clear that, that God is the one that raises up those in authority. He raised up each of you, all of us. And, and I believe that God has ordained and allowed each one of us to be brought here for this specific moment in this time. This is my belief. Many people who are on either side of the political aisle could not really find anything not to like about my Johnson. His speech was focused on God and scripture and he also emphasizes to everyone in that audience that the power bestowed on them is from God and as such they ought to honor God by doing their God-given duty for this nation. I believe that each one of us has a huge responsibility today to use the gifts that God has given us to serve the extraordinary people of this great country and they deserve it and to ensure that our republic remains standing as the great beacon of light and hope and freedom and a world that desperately needs it. This is just a message this House of Representatives, in my opinion, needs to hear in a time such as these. And as we can see in the media, those politicians in that room have for the most part tried over the last decades to take God out of everything that they do. In fact, one of them said this a few years ago. Sue bread from the Bible on the House floor, sparking a sharp response from Nadler. I'm gonna start with the truth. Deuteronomy 22.5 states a woman must not wear men's clothing nor a man wear women's clothing for the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Now this verse isn't concerned about clothing styles, but with people determining their own sexual identities. Mr. Stubbe, what any religious tradition ascribes as God's will is no concern of this Congress. And later, Stube told radio host Todd Starnes that the words, in God we trust, are set above the wall of the House Speaker's roster. As you saw and heard in that clip, there is fierce animosity against God in Scripture and the House of Representative, which ironically is supposed to operate on the basis of, in God we trust. Well, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, wants to bring a focus back on God and Scripture. In God we trust was ad adorned above this rostrum. And if you look at the little uh, guide that they give uh, tourists and constituents who come and, and, and visit the house, if you turn in there to about page 14 in the middle of that guide, it tells you the history of this. And it says very simply, these words were placed here above us. This motto was placed here as a rebuke of the Cold War era philosophy of the Soviet Union. That philosophy was Marxism and communism, which begins with the premise that there is no God. This is a critical distinction. America is the only nation in the world that is founded upon a creed. And he said it's listed with almost theological lucidity in the Declaration of Independence. What is our creed? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, not born equal, created equal. And they are endowed by the, the same inalienable rights, with the same inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. That is the that is the creed that has animated our nation since its founding, that has made us the great nation that we are. As you could see, a man like Mike Johnson, who's not just someone making loose claims about Christianity, but actually believes the Bible is a problem for those who hate God and his word. I believe that God is not done with America yet. Okay, I still believe in that motto. It's not just a, a quaint saying to me. It's what the nation was founded upon, this belief. It's what distinguishes us from all these other communist, Marxist, socialist countries around the world. It's the key to our, our greatness, and we ought to appeal to that. And I believe if we do, um, that, that, that God is going to give us his favor, and I believe we're going to solve these problems. Then that's when the attacks start coming from the media, calling the new speaker all kinds of names simply because he professes his faith boldly and has strong convictions in scripture. Didn't take him long. The liberal media now launching their first jabs at the newly minted House Speaker, Mike Johnson. But many of those attacks appear to center on his Christian faith. They are particularly perturbed by that. Just listen to this shocking comparison from Bill Maher. When I was reading about this uh, horrible shooting in Maine, 
Uh, and I heard, you know, we don't know much about the guy yet, but apparently he heard voices. And I thought, is he that different than Mike Johnson? <laughs> really? I mean, degree, yes, but it's thinner than you think. In other words, according to Bill Maher, there is no difference between a mass murdering maniac and a Christian. Taking a deeper look into the media attacks on Mike Johnson for his Christian faith and biblical worldview, we have to ask where this narrative stems from and who's pushing these attacks in the media. That's where Grand News comes in, our video sponsor today. I've been using Grand News, which is an independent app and website that combines thousands of local and international news headlines. It's been a valuable resource for researching many of my videos, and I'm excited to share this with you because this is one of my secret weapons in producing the quality videos that I do on current events. Now let's take a closer look at Heartworks with the story about Mike Johnson titled, Who is Mike Johnson? You can see that it's covered by over 80 sources in the last month with 22% leaning right, possibly a blind spot for those of you who only read from right-leaning sources. Out of all these sources, 5% are low factuality and 36 mixed factuality, so there may be sensationalized headlines, most likely where we can see narratives of the attacks on Mike Johnson. To get a deeper understanding of the story, we can scroll down in the app of the website and see every article published on Mike Johnson and compare how each outlet frames it. For example, Florida Phoenix is tagged left-leaning with mixed factuality and uses language such as religious conservative, whereas news that leans right uses positive language such as triumph to describe him being elected as the new Speaker of the House. And the political wire tagged as center-leaning defines Mike Johnson as the new boogeyman of the Democrats. You can see from these headlines the framing of who Mike Johnson is can be quite different depending on what outlet is reporting it. And for each source, they are assessed on a publication level for bias and factuality by three news monitoring organizations. What I love about Ground News is their commitment to this process, ensuring objectivity and transparency. It helps to immediately expose how politics impacts the way the news is reported by offering us context rather than dictating our perspective. This is a huge benefit that helps me see through the motives of the mainstream media sources. I encourage you to check out ground news at ground.news slash the gospel and subscribe through my link below for 30 percent off for unlimited access or try out their pro plan for less than one dollar per month ground news has been a valuable resource for me in seeing through manipulative reporting and i think you'll find it useful too now going back on the attacks on mike johnson former white house press secretary jen psyche is furious that the speaker of the house has a biblical worldview the bible doesn't just inform his worldview it is his worldview. So what does she do? Well, she took an entire section of a news program just to attack the new Speaker of the House. Now you'd expect that from Bill Maher, but it's a little more surprising when the former White House press secretary, Jen Psaki, says this. The Bible doesn't just inform his worldview, it is his worldview. In fact, during his first speech in his new job, Johnson suggested that his election as Speaker was an act of God. Talk about a bit of a humble brag there. His views on policy are essentially what you'd expect from a religious fundamentalist. They're more divisive than they are divine. All of these attacks on Mike Johnson can be boiled down to one single moment, a pivotal one that is of his life, where he decided to work with a Christian advocacy group that upholds a biblical view of the unborn that is sacred and deemed to be protected, and the comments he made on marriage being the union between a man and a woman, and that homosexuality is destructive both on a societal and spiritual level. Well, the powers that be simply despise people who have this particular worldview, namely Bible-believing Christians. Already, the, the press, the left, have come at you and come at you hard. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, I'll give you two big issues. One on the issue, you, you once worked for the Alliance Defense Fund, a Christian advocacy group, yep. and comments you had made both in writing and advocacy for this group about homosexuality, calling it sinful, destructive, um, and and not supporting gay marriage, um, quote, no clear right to sodomy in the Constitution. You have been getting hammered on this. Yeah. And I want to ask you about it. I want to know exactly, you know, where you stand. Some of these comments were 15 years ago. I don't even remember some of them. I, I was a okay. litigator that was called upon to defend the state marriage amendments. If you remember back in the early 2000s, 
I think it was over 35 states, somewhere in that number, that, that the people went to the ballot in their respective states and they amended their state constitutions to say marriage is one man, one woman. Well, I was a religious liberty defense lawyer and I was called to go in and defend those cases in the courts. Let me, let me state this very clearly, and, and there's been questions about this. Let me say where I am. Anybody that knows me will tell you this is true. I am a rule of law guy. I made a, a career defending the rule of law. I respect the rule of law. When the Supreme Court issued the Obergefell opinion, that became the law of the land, okay? I respect the rule of law, but I also genuinely love all people, regardless of their lifestyle choices. This is not about the people themselves. I, I am a Bible-believing Christian. Someone asked me today in the media, they said, it's a curious, people are curious, what does Mike Johnson think about any issue under the sun? I said, well, Go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's that's my worldview. That's what I believe. And so that's I your no personal problem. worldview. That's my personal worldview. But here's the thing: everybody comes to the House of Representatives with deep personal convictions, but all of our personal convictions are not going to become law. That's this is a a, a big body of people. There's 435 members in the House. You have to argue and find consensus and all of that. So I have no agenda other than what's best for the American people and to defend the rule of law, and that's what we're doing. Now, this is something you don't see too often. When politicians are faced with comments they've made in the past, they usually get angry or backtrack from those comments. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. This morning, love triumphed in the highest court in our land. What you just saw is a flip-flop from Hillary Clinton on the issue of same-sex marriage. And politicians usually flip-flop and backtrack their comments just so they could advance their political career. Well, she had an interesting conversation yesterday, aired yesterday on NPR. Uh, the interviewer trying to get Hillary Clinton to explain her evolution, that's Secretary Clinton's word, on, on same-sex marriage. And a few minutes into the conversation, uh, Secretary Clinton gets a little testy. So that's one for you changed your mind. <laughs> just you know, I really I have to say, I think you are um, being just, very persistent, but you are playing with my words and playing with what is such an I'm just trying to clarify issue. so I can understand. No, I don't think you are trying to clarify. <laughs> I think you're trying to say that, you know, I used to be uh, opposed and now I'm in favor and I did it for political reasons. And that's just flat wrong. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the nature of most politicians. It's as if they have no moral compass. One day they're for something and the next day they're against it. As long as the cause can advance their political career, they could care less what the moral implications of it are. In the case of Mike Johnson, he didn't backtrack not one bit from those comments. In fact, he goes on to say that he is a Bible-believing Christian. I am a Bible-believing Christian. Go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's that's my worldview. That's what I believe. This to me seems like a man who understands his faith and knows what the Bible teaches and isn't afraid to say it. And more importantly, he's a leader whose moral standards and values are from scripture. And the best for a nation, or any nation for that matter, is to have leaders who are not necessarily Christian, but fear God. That has been lacking in this society for quite some time now. And whenever someone emerges who has those biblical and moral values, the system of darkness tries everything in their power to eliminate them. You know, I come from a Christian worldview. I was very vocal about that as White House press secretary. And perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised, but media wasn't always so friendly to someone with a Judeo-Christian worldview. And in your case, some of the things that have been said, Politico interviewed a historian about your worldview, and this historian said you're a Christian nationalist. It comes from that of Christian supremacy. But what I was really surprised by is Jen Psaki, a White House press secretary herself, typically would be measured with her words, I would think, but in this case, she went so far as to call you a Christian fundamentalist. What do you think when you hear that? Um, look, there are entire industries that are built to take down uh, public leaders, effective political leaders like, like me. Um, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, it comes with the territory. It doesn't bother me at, at all. I just wish they would get to know me. Um, I'm not trying to establish uh, Christianity as the national religion or something. That's not what this is about at all. If you truly believe in the Bible's commands and you, you seek to follow those, it is impossible to be a hateful person because the greatest command in the Bible is that you love God with everything you have and you love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I want to highlight, and, and this is truly outrageous, some of these things that have been said, but I'm just very curious about, to your point, a faith that is based on love, that is Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, that was what he lived for, um, can be characterized in such a way. The Daily Beast called you a Christo-fascist. That is the first I've ever heard that term. Yeah, man. They said you're the most extreme example of a dangerously empowered religious fanatic. But here is the line that really stood out to me. They go on to say that your desire to institutionalize your faith is the way of the Taliban and the mullahs in Iran. And then Bill Maher, who we know is not a similar worldview as ours, he went so far as to bring up the main shooter. And he said, we don't know much about the guy yet, but apparently he heard voices. And I thought, is he different than Mike Johnson? I mean, degree, yes, but it's thinner than you'd think. How, what is it like to be compared to the mullahs of Iran, the Taliban, and the main shooter? It's just disgusting. I mean, that is absurd. Of course, our religion is based on love and acceptance. So to compare that worldview with the Taliban who seek to destroy their enemies or with, you know, some deranged shooter who murders people is absolutely outrageous. And I think everyone who follows and believes in a Judeo-Christian worldview should be just terribly offended by that. I'm okay. I'll take the arrows. I understand it comes with leadership. And when you step into the fray, that's what you take. And, but but what, what really hurts me is that it, it really is a statement about everyone who believes yes. in this, that, that the country was built upon. Our Judeo-Christian foundation is the heritage of our country. And in closing, I just want to say this. When a nation abandons God, they hate everything that reminds them of that God they have abandoned. So if you're a Christian in public service and who happens to speak openly about your faith or what the Bible teaches, you are automatically hated. And that is the only explanation for the type of attack and the animosity towards the Speaker of the House. As Jesus said, we will be hated in this world. If we were like the world, if we spoke like the world, believe the things that the world believe, they would love us. Since we are not like the world, then the world hates us. My prayers are with the new Speaker of the House and his family. I hope that the Lord gives him wisdom as he steps into this new world. This is it for this video and let me know what you guys think in the comments section. And until next time, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.